time of year in the season has just approached and uh, we're looking for chances to go and give ourselves a shot at the very exclusive and rare Springers. Now very quickly, I want to wish you all a great season and uh, everybody hopefully get the fish that they want have a good time. So what we're going to do is quickly try and show you very quickly the way I approach uh, springtime salmon fishing, uh, particularly on the River Finn and Donegal. Uh, first of all, the first rod here, some lot of people use for spring fish, 15 foot rod. 15 foot rod can hold on most lines from the range of 10, 9, 10 lines, spay lines, skagits, scandies, all the rest of it. Me personally, 15 foot rod is the last resort, but it can be the best resort. Water is very big, 15 foot rod, you can lift that line off the water. And you can get that distance, especially if you hit fish close in, if the water is higher than you'd like. So the 15 foot rod is vital. 14 foot rod, going around, just dropping it down a size, if you get the right conditions, nearly right, and you think it's just good enough for you to do away with the 15, this here will do the same trick. Again, holding up the most lines, fitly lift it off, good control of the flies, and also able to fish a large variety of flies. And then finally, this guy here, the 13 foot rod, 13 foot rod, all rounder, spring, summer, autumn. I choose that most of all, barn, summer time fishing if I get the water, the low water salmon fishing. But for springers, 13 foot, 14 foot, everybody's choice, give it a go. Now, naturally speaking, when you go to fish for springers, you need to be rigged out rightly So Neoprene boots, um, waders, stud it, possible. Also, you would be interested in having your hands covered, if need be, with a set of these here. Good job, not too uh, expensive. So I use these here, guys. It just lets me that line control. Keep them two fingers there, use that for line control. Feel that line there, just to make sure that I know how it works in the water. So now, it's the only thing I do, but not the way I've, I've, I've honed my tactics. So, up there, find those scrubs. This one here, good, good job for the spring fishing. Fleeced inside, naturally speaking, covers the ears. You know, gets you up there tight. One. Now, you bear this in mind, that's you fair enough, but if it's one day and you're fishing big flies, make sure you watch them eyes, because if you get a fly coming round there very fast, that can do damage. So, I would be cautious if it's a brightish day and you think there's a breeze and you think you're not confident. Just put them glasses on because it could save your eyes and naturally you'll need them. So, when the spring fishing you approach, the way I approach it, there's two things. Whenever I know the water's coming into the right height, I then decide in my brain what I want to fish and the line status. And the line status for me is always as close as I can get two and a half inches to three inches per second. Now I can go four. If I go four, that's fair. If I go after that there, I'm getting out of the stage where the water's just getting up the stage where I'm, I, basically levels are rising or you know, big water, that's, everybody can fish big water if they want. I like it that it's getting to the stage where three feet and dropping. It's three feet and dropping, then you're in business. Now when you get that line like that, and it's gone down that rate, you hear a fair idea that it's gotten through to the levels where I think the taking fish is at. And everybody would hear their different ideas, personally speaking, they're entitled to that. Myself, absolutely, open mindedness, anything can go on salmon fishing. There is no rules. And most importantly, it's a good job there's none because they'll be hardly broke by now. <laughs> so the beauty of it is getting that line down. So the salmon reels, hauling that line, that's fair enough. So you hear your right, really deep rig out, so basically in the 15 foot or 14 footers, 
you can go there, that's a traditional race. Right? I basically dinosaur at times. Go back to what I think is you know, not the modern rules are plenty of a gear that is is up to date. This one here ten ten foot three and a half inch four inch per second sink tap on it. Deadly line. The other moving down to thirteen foot again, same thing. A traditional line, uh, it's basically a Cortland four 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 sink. Classic line, you know. I'll say that uh, that line has done me a little good over the years, and uh, that's a fantastic line to use. It doesn't give up very easily. So there you go, just the line I used in that one. Anyway, when you get to the stage where you hate, then decide later, 15 foot rod, possibly 13 or 14, maybe. Again, you judge it your lengths. Again, I do it. Very very simple. Go, spring fishing to make the one fly. Uh, years ago I used to fish two flies. I thought it was a bit crazy going back then, but not. I've changed my mind. So once you get that later 15 pound breaking strain, which again I use 15 pound. Now a lot of people would want to go heavier. A one knot, absolutely. Just take your time in leaders. You know people transfer from 18 to 15. Sometimes to 12, and you know, depending on what conditions are. Good luck with that height. And if, uh, if I take one length, it's probably six foot length, maybe max six foot plus. So whenever I get that on, then I'd start to do what I think is critical point. And the critical point is where you believe and what you think is going to work. Now in order for that, there you need to understand that. Choice making is an individual thing. There's lots and lots of salmon flies out there from all over the world. Individuals can sometimes understand that something they see in the fly makes them think, I like that, and it makes them fish with confidence. And that's where the Reapers were born. And with the help of a legendary fly tire, Mr. Alan Bloomfield, we created something I think will go down in the years to come as a fantastic range of patterns of flies that people will be able to enjoy. It's not financial gain, it's nothing to do with what would be any better than anybody else. It's the beauty is, it's just a joy having them things to use and knowing that you've created them yourself and you've defeated the psychology of the salmon. You've made a take and that's what you want to try and do. That magical moment whenever it all comes together. So, for me, the spring fish, three quarter inch tube. Now, years ago, they fished the Wellingtons. The fish them. No, naturally speaking, you look at the size of Flay and Sea, you look at the size of a one inch uh, Wellington, they're pretty big. Now, over the years, people have shortened the sizes, they've fished with different weights. You know, there's the brass tungsten, to name a few, aluminium, plastic tubes, you know, brass even. And then the great flies have gone by, the, the Gary Dog, and also, you know, yourselves there. A, a fantastic fly, the, the woolly gun, and that's where the people were and continue to use them flies because they've been proving themselves for a lifetime. But I decided and uh, to use my own pattern, and uh, that's uh, silver salar, and that's their one is called the Irish salar, and uh, the Irish salar and the silver salar, they came in two different sizes. Now you can get the three quarter inch which naturally speaking is a, a lovely fly. The, the three quarter again sometimes you know to the half inch uh, Irish seller. As time went by I started to go to back to to these flies here, and th this is the guy here we all know. Uh, if you've been watching the YouTube channel, uh, as, 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 as a Grim Reaper, uh, fantastic, magnificent fly. Uh, mind you, uh, the, the, the Irish Salar and the Silver Salar would be a slight preference. Uh, there's a new fly coming out this year, 
and um, that will be released and now hopefully if we get the rain to tighten which I guarantee I'm nearly sure it will um, with that. So the tubes are a great uh, weapon to use in your choice making uh, towards what you want to put on. So when I get to the river and I get all that into my head and I know the depth I want to go to and I know the size I want to go to and I know the flies I've got to use, I won't stereotype it. I will change rarely but I'll change whenever it's necessary. We need to get stability in the river and safety is a priority and again if you're not here you ain't going to fish because you'll get drowned so most important I need people to consider it's very important that you get one of these now this is a Royal Stag uh, staff presented to myself by Bernard McGinley one of the anglers of the Blue Stag Mountains the River Fan and Bernard he kindly done this for me which is very much appreciated and I hope that uh, this year can do what it has to do, act as a lifesaver. And look, if you can't you know, get one made or anything like that, by all means just get yourself one of these guys here. They've used it many times. And it's just a 55 inch heavy weighted staff. Good solid staff, you know, ready for action. So it's a case of getting yourself a good staff, stay alive. And the only thing that's left after that there is you have it, everybody knows, and it has to happen, is you have to believe in the take. Believe. Are you ready? Good luck, tight lines. Here we are now and we're going to try and start off 2013 salmon fishing. Big fish, big fly. Believe in the take. There a fish! There a fish! There a fish, boys!
There's a fresh away. Five once again the season's upon us. It's the first day of the season. I hope Chop Tree is a great season and many memories. And this is the one that gets us kicked off. So the day the water is not went in our favour the day Chop's here, but like you only can take what you get. And sometimes you know how you, you never know. That line might tighten if you get lucky. Not right, Des. And you, oh, what sort of tactics would you be considering using the day? <laughs> get to the bar and get some black stuff. I think so. <laughs> I would say, hey, if you would second that, I love it. Well, good luck with that anyway, guys. Yep, certainly. All the best, fellas. Have a good one. Right, folks. This is the first to march the day, and here we've got one of the legends of the River Finn. And it's Paddy Harkin, and the son of the famous angler Francis Harkin. And Paddy here the day in the 1st of March had been down and he's lost a fish at Ivy. Unluckily, hey, it wasn't to hold, but he's made his way up here to tell me a story of days gone by whenever the fish were plentiful. Paddy, what was that story you tell me one time about the guy couldn't hook the fish? I was down at uh, the way down below Leonard's and I got two fish and a couple of fires at Leonard's. And there was a guy there with a fly rod and he says, I have brought a fish over there, he says, about ten times. You not take me? And he says, I'm way up to the car for the spinner. But sure, lo and behold, it was I not standing beside him with a spinning rod. So the fly went up across the ditch and we went to the car and, and I got him out of sight. I threw me hook across. Wasn't in the water till I run the fish. Paid the fish, fish up to ten pound, took him out and <laughs> I was sitting on the rock smoking and the chap landed back and he says, You'd have thought you only had two fish. Oh, I said, I had only two fish. But I got another one since you left. He says, Where's the Yenna Moss? I way down on there. Little <laughs> 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 well, did he do. He did his back turn for five like, minutes, buddy. And you had the fish out, eh? Hey? Hey, never, hey, hopefully, he never sees this guy. Maybe he'll not be funny. Three hours, that's the looking for the fish that I had out. Boys, I'm <laughs> <laughs> He was, I know, he's, I mean, why should I hope he didn't ring in and turn and say, you know, my fish you took. <laughs> well, that's a good one, buddy. Thanks very much, boy. Good man, hey, cheers, man. Yeah, boys, after fresh paints here in the opening day here, and uh, never fun. Where Bernard McGinley joined the fresh paints and dead uh, sleeps left under. And they joined the rest of the chops here having a good time. And we're, day, we're treated to some fine soup with plenty of black pepper. And a lot of fine soup. Them boys already. Cheers to Bernard and tight lines. Eh? Believe in the tea. Always. <laughs> Thanks, boys.
just uh, throw the season here, 2023, 1st of March. And the river is bone dry. And we decided just to come along and give it a throw. And hopefully this season there will be plenty more fish to be caught. Plenty of good days ahead. So the, and the springers, oh boy, I'm waiting on them. So all you have to do now is believe in the take. Believe.